Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Are you people familiar with the most enthralling deals of Dragon's Den? Well, let's get ready to dive into the details of these amazing deals. Stay tuned. The Dragons have invested millions throughout the long term. By and large, the Dragons have invested millions into the businesses of confident entrepreneurs who have set out to enter the den across the 16-year history of the show. But which ones really took off? Reggae Reggae Sauce in 2007, reggae singer and expert chef Levi Roots showed up on the show and pitched the Dragons his hot reggae sauce. While Duncan excused the thought, Levi figured out how to get the help of both Peter and Richard, who invested $50,000 for an amazing 40% stake in his business together. Nowadays, Levi is a popular cookbook writer and has his own reggae show, which airs on BBC Radio 2. You can observe his sauces loaded in all significant grocery stores of the UK, and they even surpass Heinz tomato ketchup. The sauce is presently supplied in every significant retailer, and the Levi Roots brand has been stretched out across a huge range of different items. Dissimilar to large numbers of different organizations that show up on Dragon's Den, the Dragons didn't simply put resources into Levi's business. They additionally invested in Levi Roots himself. After all, Levi is a mobile and talking billboard for the brand. Before we continue, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Craft Gin Club and Bubble Club The next fascinating deal of Dragon's Den we're going to talk about is the Craft Gin Club and Bubble Club. Back in 2016, John Holm and John Burke did what some other people have done before and gotten offers from each of the five of the Dragons for their idea of wine and gin membership administration. Nonetheless, the choice of who to go with was a simple one for the authors after Sarah Willingham uncovered she was at that point a client. They acknowledged her proposal of $75,000 in return for 12.5% offer in the business and business has been blasting since then. Presently, the business is taking advantage of the promoting opportunity that it can propose to drink and bike brands by sending their items to its endorsers. In May of 2016, Craft Clubs sent off a subsequent membership administration bubble club, which centers around shimmering wines instead of gin. Together, Craft Gin Club and Bubble Club brag a joint 25,000 dynamic client and over 150,000 email endorsers and 400,000 social media supporters. Magic Whiteboard In 2008, couple Neil and Laura Westwood entered the den with a triumphant thought. However, Peter Jones thought their creation of a convenient whiteboard was strange. They figured out how to leave with a $100,000 venture from Deborah and Theo, the last option of whom put the item into 237 of his Ryman office writing material stores. The item is presently a study hall and office staple and sold universally. Magic Whiteboard sells a variety of stationary supplies, including whiteboards, scratch pads, pegboard notice boards, and sticky notes. Wonderbly. On number four, we have their Wonder Boy deal. Fathers turned business visionaries David Kajit Newby, Tal Oren, Ashley Sarabi, and Pedro Sarapagos vowed the appointed authorities in 2014 when they pitched their idea of customized business of kids' books. Initially called out to Lost My Name, Wonderbly got a $100,000 venture from Dragon and individual father Piers, who left with a 4% stake in the organization. The organization has proceeded to sell multi-million books around the world, with Dragon Piers marking it the best business to have at any point gone through the walls of the den. In August of last year, the publisher made an announcement of a joint IP project with Roald Dahl Estate working with the production of customized books, which will put their pursuers inside Willy Wonka's chocolate manufacturing plant. Skinny Tan Last, we have Skinny Tan. Sent off in Australia in 2012 by Kate Cotton and Louise Ferguson, Skinny Tan is a normally inferring counterfeit tanning cream, which professes to decrease the presence of cellulite. Despite the fact that at-home self-tanners are the same old thing, Kate Cotton and Louise Ferguson stood out enough to be noticed by five winged serpents when they entered the den with their item skinny tan. Subsequent to uncovering that they had made more than 600,000 after only one year, Kelly and Piers matched the sum for a 10% stake in the business. 
While the brand was sold for an undisclosed total in June of 2015 to Innovaderm, both Prime supporters remain investors and Skinny Tan has proceeded to make millions from one side of the planet to the other. That's it for today's video. Which deal did you find the most interesting and inspiring? Let us know in the comments section below. Be sure to leave a like to the video if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next one.